Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Ashley Lulling. I'm the Participant Experience Manager for InterExchange's Outbound Programs for U.S. Citizens. And I also manage our Christensen Fellowship, which is the subject of today's webinar. My colleague Stephanie is here too, helping out. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to chat them in the chat box. You can chat them to everyone or directly to Stephanie. Next slide, please. So for a little bit of background on InterExchange, for those who are not familiar with us, we are a nonprofit organization based in New York City. Our mission is to promote cross-cultural understanding through experiential volunteer and work abroad programs. And we've been dedicated to this endeavor since 1968. Next slide. InterExchange's co-founder, Uta Christensen, started the foundation in 2007 to support young Americans with a passion for improving the world and learning and sharing culture. Her motto was, go abroad now, make a difference. Next slide, please. So the fellowship is named in her honor and it supports young Americans who, like I said, are passionate about helping a community abroad and who are eager to learn about local culture as well as share American culture. Fellows independently arrange a volunteer service project abroad for at least six months. By independently, I just mean that fellows are not paying a program provider to join a volunteer or intern program abroad. Many fellows will contact an organization working on an issue that they care about, and they'll inquire about volunteer or intern opportunities. Some will actually even approach an organization with a specific project proposal. The award is meant to cover fellows living expenses while abroad, and it can also go towards any project materials as well as flights to and from the host country. Awards range from $2,500 to $10,000. The grant selection committee will carefully review the budget that fellows submit in their application and consider the cost of living in the host country, as well as the project duration when determining the specific award amount. Next slide, please. So we support fellows carrying out a wide range of projects. Past fellows have focused on multiple international issues, including public health, environmental conservation, legal advocacy, female empowerment, as well as poverty alleviation, among other topics. There are so many issues deserving of attention, and we seek to support a, a diverse amount of young Americans with various interests. So we have purposely not created specific project categories or types. Next, we'll talk about eligibility. To be eligible for the Christensen Fellowship, you must be a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident between the ages of 18 and 28 at the start of your project date. You must be participating in a volunteer or intern project abroad on site for at least six months. Uh, we really hope that fellows are interacting with the local community and building relationships, and we feel that anything less than six months would make this difficult to do. The fellowship does not support independent research, academic credit projects, or study abroad programs. We're one of the few funding opportunities that doesn't require student status. So next slide, please. Here's what we look for in fellows. In your application, fellows should demonstrate their interest or passion in the service project. For example, have you studied sustainable agriculture in school and now you want on the ground experience? Or maybe you volunteered for an organization working on the same or similar issue here in the US and now you want a more in-depth experience abroad. We're also looking for fellows who have a specific skill set to contribute to the community abroad wanting to help and being capable of helping are two different things. So let us know what experience or skills you will contribute. 
Uh, to give you an example, one of our recent fellows had volunteer experience facilitating dialogues between Israeli and Palestinian youth. She is going to apply this experience to her fellowship project at a prison in South Africa, where she'll be facilitating dialogues between victims and offenders. Um, we also are seeking fellows that are goal-oriented. We will ask applicants to provide their project goals and explain how they will measure their progress. We support fellows who can show how their project will positively impact their host community. And ideally, the service project should relate to the fellow's future plans. Lastly, we're looking for young Americans who will represent InterExchange and the U.S. well. You will be serving as an ambassador, and we want to support individuals who are excited to learn about the host culture, who are respectful, and who are also eager to share American culture. Next slide, please. In terms of the actual service projects, um, first and foremost, we are looking for projects that will benefit the local community. Um, for example, one of our fellows helped start a tailor training and farm project for marginalized communities in Malawi. Her income and nutrition projects fulfilled a vital need and had a direct impact on the host community. Your project should also be sustainable in that the benefits don't end when you leave. So this could mean that others are carrying on your project once you leave or the knowledge or training that you impart is enduring. Of course, we also hope that your project is environmentally sustainable as well. Um, it's really important to us that the nonprofit or NGO that fellows are volunteering with or collaborating with are well respected and established in the community. Um, we certainly don't want to support a fellow associated with an organization that locals don't respect because, again, we want them to be involved and to benefit from the projects. Lastly, we'll examine the feasibility of the project. Um, are your project goals feasible given the project duration? Also, is the location safe for you to even carry out the service project? Next, I'm going to highlight some Christians and fellows to illustrate the diversity of individuals and projects we support, um, starting with Gabriella Pages. She spent 12 months in Peru volunteering with Socios and Salud, which is a Peruvian branch of the global NGO Partners in Health. Um, and Gabby was supporting their mobile tuberculosis screening vehicle. Peru has one of the highest reported TB incidence rates in the Americas. Um, and impoverished neighborhoods in Lima, where Gabby volunteered, often lack access to quality health care. This mobile screening vehicle goes directly to these communities, and their screening technology can predict the probability that a person has TB in just 10 to 15 minutes. So Gabby's project directly impacted the host community serving a vital need. And Gabby had um, fluency in Spanish as well as a degree in public health, which she applied to drive community engagement and map out the vehicle's route. All right, next slide, please. Jacqueline's project is very different from Gabby's and all the way across the world. She deferred college to volunteer in Bali, Indonesia for six months to promote sustainable waste management. A lot of waste in Bali is burned, scattered, or dumped in waterways or open landfills. And the organization Jaclyn volunteered with seeks to improve waste management, among other initiatives. And prior to her fellowship, Jaclyn had spent several summers volunteering in land conservation and sustainable farming in New Mexico. And she really wanted to explore conservation efforts abroad and get some more experience in the field before she went to college. Um, okay, great, next slide, please. Tiffany served the, a marginalized community in the Dominican Republic, teaching Spanish literacy and designing youth development programs. Prior to her Christensen Fellowship, Tiffany had spent two years teaching in Colombia and had gained fluency in Spanish. The organization she volunteered with for her fellowship was so impressed with her service that they actually hired her after her fellowship ended to continue developing youth programs for them. 
Okay, great. The next Christensen Fellow that I want to highlight to illustrate the diversity of individuals and projects we support is David Cotton. Um, David spent six months in Athens, Greece, working with a local NGO to help launch two refugee-run businesses. One was a salon and the other was a shop selling handmade goods crafted by refugees. David had a background in operations management, which he applied to this project, and he had previously volunteered in Athens and had witnessed firsthand the steep barriers that many refugees there face in terms of accessing employment as well as integrating into the community. So as you can see, the fellows and the projects we support are diverse and we're always excited to read applications and learn about how young Americans want to support and learn from communities abroad. So next slide, please. So the application is completely online. You can access it from the fellowship site, which I've um, included at the bottom of this slide. The application entails that you detail your project, tell us what are you gonna be doing, where, uh, which organization you're going to be volunteering with or collaborating with, what are your project goals, and how are you going to measure those goals. We'll also ask for a detailed budget um, where you let us know your cost of living, um, any local transport costs, as well as airfare, and it's totally fine if these are estimated costs. There's also an essay in which we'll ask you to address specific prompts. Um, for the letters of recommendation, um, they should be a former or current employer, teacher, or mentor, someone who can speak to your character and your suitability for the proposed project. Um, and there is a specific prompt that we have that you can give to your recommenders. Um, we don't care about your GPA. I mean, we're happy for you if you got straight A's, but what we care about is hearing about your characteristics and your ability to carry out your service project. We'll also ask for a resume, just one page to get a sense of your background and experience to date, as well as a copy of your US passport or permanent resident card to ensure you meet the eligibility requirements. There is a $50 application fee and this covers the administrative costs of reviewing applications. Every year we offer three application cycles. They are always March 15th, July 15th, and October 15th. Um, please apply no more than one year in advance of your slated project start date. Um, you can apply if your project has already started, um, but ideally you shouldn't have been on your project for more than a couple of months at the time of application. Applications are not reviewed on a rolling basis. Um, so if you apply, let's say January 1st, we're not gonna actually review your application until shortly after the next deadline, which would be March 15th. We will confirm receipt of your application and let you know if anything's missing, but we won't actually start uh, the review process until the application cycle. And we are accepting applications still despite COVID-19. We totally understand that your slated travel dates might change, um, but we are, like I said, the fellowship is still open. Okay, next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, um, we offer three application cycles every year, and here's an overview of the timeline um, for what fellows can expect from the time they apply until they actually are notified and get the award. So within two weeks, Following the application deadline, applicants are notified um, if they've been selected for the interview round. I conduct an interview of, via video to learn more about fellows and their projects. And after the interviews are complete, the Inner Exchange Foundation Selection Committee meets to select the recipients. Um, and applicants are notified of the final decision six to eight weeks after the application deadline. The award is dispersed in two installments. The first one is shortly after the fellow's project starts. We will contact their supervisor on site to confirm that the fellow has arrived and they've begun working on the project. And then the final um, disbursement is within 30 days of the fellow's project end date, 
um, once we've received the fellows completion report, which is a report reflecting on their service project, um, paying particular attention to the cross-cultural understanding that transpired. Next slide, please. So you can read more about our fellows and their really interesting projects on our foundation blog. Fellows are required to write at least two blog posts about their service project. Next slide. And here's my contact information. Please feel free to email me or call me with any questions. I'm always happy to help. Um, and now um, we'll open it up to questions. So definitely feel free to chat them to us. So it looks like we don't have any questions quite yet, um, but what I can do is cover some frequently asked questions that I receive. Um, one is how competitive is the fellowship? So this is um, a very competitive fellowship and every cycle is different. So I just advise applicants to carefully review the eligibility criteria and just carefully follow the application requirements. Sometimes I still get applications for, from individuals who are seeking to apply the fellowship to a study abroad program, but that's not what this fellowship is for. Um, and as I mentioned, we're looking for applicants with a demonstrated interest in the project topic and who can articulate the specific skill set that they will contribute, um, as well as having clear project goals um, and an outline of how they're going to measure those goals. Another question I often receive is, what is the average project duration and award? So the average duration is about nine months and the average award is $6,000. Um, again, we you have to be abroad at least six months. We feel like this is the minimum amount of time um, that will allow you to really build relationships with the locals that you are serving. Another question I often receive is, can I apply more than once? So if you don't receive the fellowship, you are welcome to apply again. Um, if you've already received the fellowship though, you are not eligible to receive it again. And another question that I often receive is, do fellows have any responsibilities or requirements once they've received the fellowship? So yes, it's a very small, um, a small ask that we have, and that's that you submit at least two blogs um, to share um, information about your service project. Um, and at the end, within 30 days of your project end date, we do require a completion report in which you reflect on your service project with a focus on the intercultural learning that transpired. Okay, so those are all of the um, frequently asked questions that I receive. Um, Actually, no one oh, question just come in. Um, and this is from, from Brenda um, from Grand Valley State. And she asked, do you see quite a bit of overlap with Peace Corps? So we actually have had a few fellows who previously served in the Peace Corps. Um, but it's just been a small amount, but certainly individuals who are great candidates for the Peace Corps are certainly usually great candidates for the Christensen Fellowship as well. So I hope that answered that question. I would say it's it's kind of um, a little bit less of a commitment too, because I just know that Peace Corps is, they have like the two, mere, two year commitment um two year plus because i think with training included so i think that with with this fellowship um if you're just looking for something like a shorter term project i think that's um that could be a, a good option yeah thank you stephanie for highlighting that um this is just a minimum of six months whereas i know um, peace corps is substantially longer so if you are not able to be abroad that long or don't want to be abroad that long um, this is another way to have a meaningful service project and an impact on a local community without such a substantial commitment Okay, great. Well, um, if there are no other questions right now, um, we can, um, oh, do you do, what is this? Is there another question, Stephanie? 
Yeah, um, looks like also do, do we do you do zoom info sessions for um, for campus communities. Um, I'm happy to do that. I haven't um, done that recently, but um, Brenda, I would be happy to connect and set something up for your campus. Um, yeah, I'm happy to connect and offer like specific presentations or, or Zoom calls with um, anybody who's interested. And Ashley, do you um, know if, I think this relates to her next question, do you um, have anyone that would um, participate maybe like a, um, a former recipient? Yeah, so we can definitely reach out to some of our alumni. Um, we are always asking them to, to kind of contribute on things like this. So um, I'd be happy to reach out to some of our alumni to see if they might be interested in sharing their experience, because I know it's really helpful to hear um, from someone who's actually done the fellowship. Okay, um, well, if there are no other questions right now, um, please definitely feel free to send me an email or call me. I'm happy to, to answer any questions or even set up like a, another presentation if you are from a university campus. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today.